So I would like to, first of all, begin our meeting with sharing, sharing some uh, Christmas cards that we got uh, after our meeting. The first one is from Nancy Ann and, and Mark, and it says, Dear ladies, wishing you the best, uh, and that your lives may be blessed with Jesus as our guest. So, uh, again, that's a nice little Christmas card from Nancy Ann. And the second one is from the O'Keefe family. Phyllis and, and Bob, and you will see on the back there is a bunch of uh, pictures of the family, so we'll pass those around. And then we got a, a couple of thank you notes from our, our um, staff. Um, I, I'm sure you're all aware that we give our Roser staff an extra Christmas bonus, and we are getting thank you notes from them. And we also got a thank you note from the Roser Food Pantry uh, for our generous gift of $1,500. So you can, you can just give yourself a little pat on the back for that um, because it, this all comes from your hard work at the thrift shop. And I, I know you, some of you know Martha Lowenson, and she sends us a nice little Christmas card as well. And we also got a Christmas card from Margaret Art, and she says, we miss all of you. So I'm going to, uh, Nancy, and if you want, Nancy, if you want to get these and pass, start passing them around. Thank you. Um, you all got your, the update to the um, 2023 yearbook. Um, and I have one other addition to put on it, and I will be sending it out to Kitty Cole has her information for us, so we will be giving that in to you as well. But these people here are um, in, in, like Ann Jones is in, in Loveland, Colorado. Margaret Art is now back at the Discovery Village of Sarasota. Um, Margo wrote her telephone now because it's only her cell phone. Marge Phillipson is from, in Minnesota, and she would really appreciate any kinds of cards from us. And then Nancy M. Hall's um, winter address is here. So take note of those things. On your table, you see uh, the minutes for December. Um, hopefully, you had a chance to look them over. Um, are there any additions or corrections to the minutes? I make the motion and we accept the minutes. Okay, a motion by Margot Kinsley has been uh, is on the floor that we accept the minutes. I'll second. second. Ginger seconds. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Minutes are approved. Treasurer's report. <laughs> We've had a good year. Um, as of yesterday, um, we've got $70,756.55 in our money market, $15,116.12 in our checking account, and $66,220.30 in our CD, which means we made $220.30 in our CD in just over a month, less than two months. I also um, I thought you might have got, got it. I got an email thank you from David Cheshire. First, he wanted to know if I made the made a contribution. I said, well, the Gill did. Um, the extra 7500 and they say that it helped the church very much. Um, last year, we spent $53,486.25, which was only 77.3% of our budget. Um, Part of our savings was um, scholarships were not used, um, and then other things like um, we did not spend as much money on migrant sewing, um, the, the food, uh, food for our luncheons, um, but we, we did well, um, but we ended the year with an increase in our, um, over our expenses of $41,000. 
nine cents. So I think we did fantastic. Any questions? Hopefully we're going to pass the budget. Thank you, Margo. Um, we need to ask you to do the migrant sewing report. <laughs> Sorry about that. I thought I forgot that you were up here already. <laughs> I forgot it was on the list. Um, We've had very good um, attendance at uh, migrant sewing. Annie has joined our group this year. Um, as of yesterday, when we had our, our meeting and we, were, we didn't meet the day after Christmas, We've got 95 quilts in the closet. Wow. So we are doing well. We still got almost three months to go. Um, and Linda has made all 40 of our layouts for next year. And I'm working on hats. If anybody wants to make baby hats, we had 97 hats last year, so I'd like to get at least 100 this year. There are about three or four other ladies that are making hats. So. If you know how to knit. <laughs> yes, all I have to do is knit. Anyway. Any small size. <laughs> That's fantastic. It's one of our uh, missions, and, and we are just so proud of Margo and her group that they they have just done such a wonderful job to help our migrant workers. Uh, Peggy, your Miss Peggy Nash, your Church Women United report. Four of us oh, went to the Church of Women United meeting and uh, it was the annual business meeting. And we were a little bit late getting there because it was cold and because of the traffic that we face when we go south through Home Beach. Um, we took um, bags for the children who are foster children who were taken from their homes in Manatee County because parents misbehave. And so um, most months at Church Women United, we are requested, if we can, to bring something special. And this month, it was to bring something to put the children's um, possessions in when they're taken from their homes. And so we were happy to do that. Um, we missed the opening prayer and the reading of the treasurer's report, but we received written copies of it. Um, the um, treasurer's report showed that the, the treasurer had spent um, $243 on shoes. Uh, I'm mistaken. I can't read my own printing. Had, had spent $421 at Bell's Outlet on shoes for children in our county. When we needed shoes. And um, $243 went to Church Women United National. Um, and it's for the different awards that we give. And next month will be our Human Rights Day celebration where an organization in this county, and it, it can be any organization, um, that serves most especially women and children which are the focus for Church Women United. And that meeting will be February 3rd. Our Church Women United meetings are almost always the first Friday of the month. And um, we are suggested, anyway, uh, asked to bring personal items for women um, to this meeting um, that will go to those I'm not sure. Sila Freedom received the Human Rights Award several years back, and there are several places where there are women in need of these kinds of things. So if you'd like to, and if you can, um, we'll appreciate your supplying some of those things. And the meeting will be at Pathways Christian Fellowship, uh, which is on 6th Avenue West, that's Manatee Avenue going east, okay, that we go by there. And if you can go, we'd like to go with me. Um, the address we'll be sure to have in the bulletin and so forth. But I'd be happy to have you go and um, celebrate and help us worship together with women from uh, other churches in town.
Thank you. Oh, well, something else I'm, I want to bring up while I'm here. Um, I attended the Stephen Ministry meeting yesterday, and I'm wondering if you all know what Stephen Ministry is all about and Grief Share, and that we do have these people available at Mercer Church who meet together and have had training to listen and to help each other and to help others in these um, areas. So I told him that I would mention, remind you that we do have Stephen ministers that are available and um, we're here to, to listen and to help. So I thank you for your time. Just add something. Sure. Thank you. I forgot to say something when I think was wrecking. When I saw the thank you note from the food, uh, Roser Food Pantry, um, we did get them the $1,500 that was budgeted uh, in memory of all the women that have passed away from the church. We're trying to we're going to acknowledge them a little bit later, but making sure we didn't miss any. But we actually gave the food pantry. $2,764.50. The balance of that was collected um, over at the thrift shop. And so we have really done in our food bag, our, the hunger funds on the table, but um, also go ahead and get added into that. So So we do have those. We do support the Hunger Fund, which is the Roser Food Pantry. And uh, so on the tables, you see a basket, and that's where, if, if you want to put a, a dollar or two or whatever, we, we uh, every month collect money for that, and then that goes to the food pantry, along with what we collect with from the thrift shop. So now we are coming to old business, which is voting on our budget. So Laura? Great. Uh, I did a recap last month, but for anyone who's not here, I'll just do the 30-second version. <laughs> so we're looking at, I put a couple of sheets on the tables that you can share because, you know, I don't want your eyes to glaze over. So <laughs> the highlights are, you know, 2019, 2020, 2021. Revenues were pretty uh, steady up until covid so that was, um, like for 2021, 50,000 in expenditures, 2020, 49,000, 2021, 46,000, 2022, 53,000. Our expenditures are very steady, but our revenues vary widely because we had to close the shop so much and then we had the renovation. So our pre-COVID revenues were 58,000 in 2019, 26,000 in 2020, 37,000 in 2021, almost 90,000 this past year. So we just blew everything out of the park. We've never had this much revenue before. We completely um, overcame our budget deficit for the two years but and, and renovations. When we were closed, we had a budget deficit of 30,000 between the two years. We completely blew that away, plus 10000 So pre-COVID, we had a $12,000 net revenue, so kind of a comfortable um, money left over to go into our savings. Then we went into a $30,000 hole, but 40000 wiped out the 30 and gave us 10 to the good. So we're, we're really looking good. We've uh, recovered our two-year buffer, which we found out that we needed because we just went through that. So we're right up to where we were, and now going forward, it's now we're going to actually be able to donate more in the future. So for 2023, we've just added one ministry, bring on the ministry, and other than that, our budget is conservatively just what it was last year for the most part. There aren't any major changes. So, again, we're both conservative on the budget. It's like, let's get the money in the bank before we try forward spending. So, 
2023, we're just hoping for another good year, and we'll come back to you if there's um, anything that we want to do before the end of the year that's in addition to the budget presented. But, no surprises. Does anyone have any questions? Thank you, Laura. Um, are there any questions? Well, she just asked her another question. <laughs> Do I have a motion to accept the 2023 budget? Jean, a second? I'll second it. Okay. Katie actually seconded it. Um, all right. And, and any more discussion? All right. Then let's vote on it. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Very nice. So our new business, under new business, I have two items. The first is about the fashion show. We put out sign-up sheets over here, if you can help. This is March 14th, <coughs> and we are uh, needing help in the kitchen March 13th to prepare the food. March 14th, we'll need uh, to prepare the plates and to uh, uh, we need also to serve, and we also need uh, people to help with decorating. Uh, so that's basically the luncheon part of it. Plus we need people to clean up. But we also need models, and uh, we have a new director doing that that we're, we're, we're working with. And she knows a lot of what's going on, but hasn't um, quite known everything that needs to be done. So with Ginger's help, we're going to get the models and get everything together. But if you feel today you would like to be a model, there's a sign-up sheet for that as well. And, um, we model clothes from the thrift shop. So that would be uh, something that uh, if you're interested in, uh, we have a number of outfits that are picked out, we thought would work well, but you are welcome also to just go over to the thrift shop and pick out what you want to wear. So please sign up for that. The second thing was... I love this. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. What kind of model? I love this. We need models. The second uh, new business is that uh, the Roser Guild women have been invited to an all-island church luncheon at St. Bernard's Catholic Church on April 13th at 11 o'clock. And they are providing all the food. They just felt this would be a great idea to get the women, church women of this island together and to know each other. So um, there is a sign-up sheet over there. If you are interested in going, please sign up. I have to let the uh, chairman know how many might be able to come. And um, so that's April 13th. 13th? 13th. Does anyone else have any more new business? Oh, I do. <laughs> <laughs> Just want you to make a, uh, be aware of this little brochure. It's uh, a, a guide to the consignments shops in Manatee County, Sarasota, Lakewood Ranch, Braden, and Amaria. And we uh, voted to put our thrift shop in this little brochure. These are available at the um, at the thrift shop, and so. Um, we just thought this was a good way to advertise. We are the only one on the island. She so had to, She had to change the title. <laughs> and, oh, Anna and include <laughs> Anna Maria. Okay. So at any rate, we have these available to hand out. Anybody that is a cashier is welcome to hand these out to uh, people. Inside, inside there's a list of about 20 to 25 thrift shops and a map. Uh, with all the information, their addresses, phone numbers, etc. <laughs> because some people like to make a day of it and travel around to different places. So. Okay, so but Laura, for, the, uh, for our folks at home, Laura is no, saying it's, it's this map tells oh, all yeah. the shops, and, and a lot of times people take this and then they'll make a day of through shopping, they'll find their route. Anyway, these are available. We're so happy that Laura brought this to our attention, and we were 
there's some on the table, so you're welcome to take some as we as you leave. So any more new business? All right. I have a motion to adjourn. I'll make the motion. I right. second it. All right. Margot made the motion. Nancy Ann seconded. Uh, Nancy. <laughs> Sorry. No. Uh, Nancy. Nancy, Nancy Moran. 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 Said. Second. And uh, without any objection, we are going to adjourn because I need to. <laughs> uh, our next meeting will be February 14th. It's a Valentine tea. And we are working on a program. So we have we have a, we have some ideas, but they're not finalized yet. But we'll let you know. We'll let you know. So Barbara, you want to do your part, and then we'll have our program. Thank you. Okay. Hello, everybody. Um, we are so blessed with this group to have a number of wonderful women who have been around for a few years. <laughs> and uh, so we want to acknowledge them today and, um, and celebrate their longevity and their interest in their love of, of Christ and of, of Rosary Church. So I have a little um, few thoughts here from Nancy Ann, who wrote up a little, um, little thought about, about, about our experience here and with these women. And it's called God's Safety Net Best. And the scripture she takes us from is Ephesians 6, 14, 17. And stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of, of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Here's Nancy Ann's thoughts. The roads near us are filled with construction workers, don't we know, these days wearing blaze orange and neon yellow safety vests. They wear them for their protection. In the same way, we are honoring women today who wear unseen spiritual safety vests. They are 90 years of age or more. They believe in the Lordship of Jesus Christ. They pray to him. They ask him to guide their lives. The prayers of the Holy Spirit surround them like a safety vest. These women rely on the promises and beliefs that the Bible holds for daily strength and spiritual sustenance. They also try and take care of themselves and get enough sleep at night. <laughs> so we honor them for their strength, their love, the care they show, and we hope our unseen safety vests are visible for the world to see through the faith and kindness we share daily. And here's a prayer. Lord, we honor women today who have reached the age of 90 or more. Thank you for their spiritual safety vests, which have carried them this far. Help them know that we love them for their years of service, that they have given to our churches, our neighborhoods and our community, as well as the Women's Guild. Bless them with health and strength and your continuing love and care. Help us also in our journey and give us wisdom so that our lives tell your loving story. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. All right, so um, I have a list and I'm going to call out some names. I don't know. Um, maybe we'll just deliver the roses or um, yeah. we'll do that. Um, so these are our, our wonderful women we're going to honor today. It uh, starts with Anne Amorosa, who cannot be here today. Uh, Margaret Art, who cannot be here today. Also Helen Brown, Margaret Chapman, Jan Kidger is here today. So Not, who is here today. And Martha Lowenson, who is not, as is Ann Morse, we miss her and all the ladies who are here today. Peggy Nash. We want to honor Dorothy Pond. She cannot be here today. And Lillian will sure get that to her. 
Marion Valentine. And one a little early, Charlotte with us today. She's not quite 90 yet, but Next very month. soon. Next uh, Charlotte May. I guess also we'd like to just take a moment to, to, uh, to remember our friends and members who we've lost. Um, this year in April, it was Pat Story, who was an active member of the Naomi Circle. Um, and uh, we, we all remember Mary Sane and Dottie Foxon, who I think was maybe last year, the last year. but uh, we want to, we still think of them. So it, does anybody know of anyone else that I missed that I had a hard time finding any info about this? Well, Peter went off to Rejoice for a store a lot, and she spent a lot of years with her store. Yeah. She's, um, I guess, has she passed away? You know, I don't no, know. No, uh, she's not quite 90 because I checked in about her because we thought she was close. To, you know, she, 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 she would have been a 90. But I think she's only 87 or something. Only. Oh, um, <laughs> Joy Bennington keeps in touch with her, and oh, so I checked with Joy. Oh, and, uh, okay. I didn't know how old she was. I don't know. I didn't either. But her, where her name came up. Yeah. Is it okay? So let's just say a little prayer for these ladies. Dear Lord, we just thank you so much for this day and for our get-together. And we thank you for these ladies who cannot be here today, who have passed on to a greater reward, who are at home or in, in, in facilities. We ask you to bless them and keep them in your care. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Okay, and now our program, our, our beautiful speaker, Melinda. Melinda <laughs> is the founder of uh, Bring on the Ministry. It was founded in April of 2018, right? Yes, ma'am. This mission is based on Matthew 25, verses 35 through 36. And that reads as follows. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. I was in prison, and you came to visit me. This ministry provides spiritual and physical needs to the homeless of Bradenton through the means of a, sh a mobile shower trailer that sh houses two showers, provides them with around 125 hot showers each week. We have provided you Melinda, with a big basket of stuff. Oh, thank you. These Yay. are personal size shampoos, body lotions, uh, conditioners, soap, toothbrushes. Thank you. Um, there's toothpaste. There's all sorts of stuff all in there. All oh. So Melinda has stated, we will put it, the shower trailer, where it is most needed in our community. We are ready to go where we are sent. And that's, I think, uh, in a nutshell, what your ministry is all about. So with that, um, I first of all want to present you with a check from our guild for coming to see us and oh, speak. Thank you. And because our budget has been passed, there will be another one. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, well, thank you. We appreciate that. Well, good afternoon, everybody. Um, a lot of you I know or see at the wonderful ice cream store. So uh, that is my home away from home, but really the streets are my true home. Um, so to tell you a little bit about us, I founded Bring On the Ministry in 2018. Um, I served with lots of churches and lots of other agencies, and I really felt like God was just clearly speaking to me, go. And so I did just that. So in 2018, yeah, 2018, I had to think. 2018, it seemed like it was so long ago. In 2018, I went and uh, founded a 501c3. I had to raise $10,000 to get it licensed and an LLC and insurance. And I thought that that sounded very daunting. And within about two weeks, I had the money raised. So that's how you know God is like, 
on your side. Because um, believe it or not, I, was, I raised the money in small amounts and I was a little bit discouraged because I made an appointment with a tax gentleman named David Greenfield who does all of our um, taxes and our paperwork on the ministry. And I made the appointment and he's very hard to get in with. He's in Clearwater. And um, I said, oh, I'll take the first appointment you have. He said, okay. And three days before I was supposed to meet with him, I was 4,000 short. Mm. And a customer came into the ice cream store and said, aren't you trying to do your own 501c3? And I said, yes, but I'm some money short. I don't think I'm going to be able to do it yet. And he's like, oh, how much are you short? And it was literally like 4000 It was like 3800 or something. And um, he came in the next day with a check. Mm. So that's how Bring On the Ministry was founded. And I have spent most of my time on the streets. My husband will tell you that my car stops at all homeless people. Um, that I, I think that the button that has your little triangle of flashers is meant to be stopped for humans, not for emergencies otherwise. So um, I do stop and visit a lot of people, and I see lots of different things. But I also partner with a lot of really cool agencies. And um, my team, um, I have a board of seven. Um, all of my board members do participate in our agency. Um, some do marketing, some are on the streets, some help with showers, some are like that one-time call. Um, so we have a very active board, which um, was our goal. We didn't want bench warmers, we wanted doers. And um, I accomplished that. So we do have showers, and I always say showers are like the thing that everybody knows us for because it's big and bold and people see it out. Um, but with the showers comes lots of other things. And the other things that we get to do is we get to go out and meet people right where they're at and empower them with resources to make a difference. So yesterday is a great example. And I have this wonderful gentleman who I thought was maybe brought to me to be a thorn in my side. He, um, his name is Clarence, and he is mentally ill. He spent two years in an institution. Um, at seven years old, his um, mother died, and at 12 years old, his father died. He lived in foster care. He's about 55 years old. Um, he cannot read or write. Um, he was not, he spent most of his life in and out of institutions. And he came to see me at, I have an office at Turning Points a couple days a week um, for resourcing. And he came to see me and he told me that he thought the government was ripping him off. And I have to tell you, when people tell me that, I usually go, no they're not. Let's have a look. Because I don't always want to agree with the person if I don't know the facts. And traditionally, the government is not ripping you off. Like, their stuff is pretty itemized, so hard to do. Well, he was in fact right. And it turned out that because he was on Medicaid, um, the government, when he turned of a certain age, started taking Medicare a and B out of his social security check. And yesterday, I found a $2,300 heir that he will be getting back. Ooh. And he was in fact right. And I was very happy, because I was like, oh, he's mentally ill, he just thinks everyone's out to get him. I was relieved to tell him he was right. Mm -hmm. And so that is what I get to spend a lot of my week doing. So I've partnered Bring on the Ministry with Turning Points, and I have an office there that we call Navigation, and I get to sit with people. Yesterday I had a mom come in, she had four autistic children, didn't know how to get them in school. I called Easter Seals, got them into the elementary school. They will start next week. Mm -hmm. So that is what I get to do. Because a lot of times as a society we say, oh, they're homeless because they don't want to try and get a job. They're on the street because they're too lazy to work. So we have a woman, her name is Nellie, and Nellie and her mom were on the streets. Nellie's mom was in a wheelchair, she was 83 years old, and Nellie is in her 60s. 
And I talked to these two for three months straight, every single day. Do you want me to help you? No. Okay, have a great day. Do you want me to help you? No. Then I had my friend talk to them, because I get curt as the days go on. I'm like, do you want help today? No. Okay. So my friend, who's a nurse, talked to them. Well, the mom ended up in the hospital. And I said, Nellie, here's your chance for freedom. Your mom can go to a facility where she'll be well taken care of, and you're not pushing her around in a wheelchair, and we can get you into housing. Well, it turned out that they lived in a trailer, and the landlord upped the rent so high that they couldn't afford it on Social Security, and they were evicted. And Nellie was a CNA here in town. Well, again, I don't take everybody at face value. I call them verified it. And it was the truth. She was a CNA there for 22 years. And when they got evicted, she had to take care of her mother. So we put her mom in the facility. She's doing great. We get to have lunch with her. We got Nellie a job at Goodwill. She's making $17 an hour, plus she has full benefits, and she can ride the bus. Nellie has never had her license in her entire life, and I told her if she saved $4,000, I think we will get her her driver's license. I said, I need you to be able to save the money, just like my parents did with me, save the money so you can afford insurance and a car, and I will teach you how to drive. So, we're probably going to be doing that. And we put her in a trailer. And I have a friend who runs a program where she buys trailers and gives them to seniors that are homeless or indigent. And we put Nellie in one of those trailers. So her mom is in a facility doing a wonderful job, and Nellie is in a home thriving. So are all stories like that? No. Last week I got a phone call that one of my boys got kicked out of the halfway house because he didn't know how to act. So we have lots of successes, but we also have failure, right? That's life. And I give the same lecture to everyone. Did you apologize? Did you, did you try to make it right? Do you know how hard it's going to be for me to get you into another facility? It's impossible. I have a boy who calls me mom. His name is Braxton. Bless his heart. He's 28 years old, in and out of the prison system. He got a job at the Dollar Tree. I got him all hooked up with Dollar Tree. Doing a great job. Well, he told me he walked out. I said, you will go back, you will apologize, and when you have that job back, you can come and ask me for more help. He did. He's at the Dollar Tree on Manatee Avenue. So sometimes it's tough love, too. And so I always like to tell people, to me it's not necessarily about giving out supplies and handing out toiletries. It's able to, being able to build relationships with people so that they trust you enough to let them in. So my biggest pet peeve is people who go out and hand out sandwiches everywhere. Because we can fill your belly all day long, but are we equipping you long term? We're not. So I like to hand out a sandwich, but I'll sit on the bench and eat that sandwich with you so that we can have a conversation of what your future looks like. And sometimes that's a hard conversation. And sometimes it's a great conversation. But oftentimes it takes my team building relationships in the community with people to get them what they need. And yesterday I had a dad come to me and I said, sir, with all due respect, you are so lazy. I can't even wrap my head around how lazy you are. He told me that he would be very happy raising his two children on $640 a month if he didn't live in the United States of America. And I didn't have the heart to say, you can't even afford on $640 a month to get tickets to fly to any other country. So <laughs> right now you're stuck in America. So we have to make it work. So as much as I give out supplies and give out assistance, I also share a lot of tough love. Because I think oftentimes we think of the today, but we don't think about the whole week, or the month, or the year. And so I always ask my homeless friends, where do you see yourself in a week? Where do you see yourself in two weeks? Where do you see yourself in a month? And so that's a lot of the time what we do, is building relationships with the people on the streets, and with agencies that will help me help them. Halfway houses, 
drug addiction programs, overnight programs, day programs, and not just showering them and sending them on their way. I was thrilled to hear you talk about women and children. We are seeing more and more and more women living in cars with children because men walked out of their lives or were abusive. I see it more now than ever. As an agency, we got to walk a family through sending them home to Boston because they moved here to be with her husband and her husband got arrested three days later for beating her up. And my husband and I and a nurse on our team put them on a bus and her and her children are reunited with a family. So I encourage you to keep the mission for women and children. Getting children into school more now than ever. One raw law that I love in Manatee County is it's not illegal to be homeless, but it is illegal for your children to not be in school. Praise the Lord. Why? Because in Manatee County, they get breakfast and lunch for free. So no matter what is going on, they are getting two meals a day. It also means that somebody is checking on them, a teacher, making sure that they're safe. So important. It infuriates me when I see children on the street. And oftentimes, I get choked up because I'm the one calling and having them taken away. Oh. It's horrible. So, pardon my tears, but I have made more CPS calls than should be allowed because of children that are just not taken care of. I had a mom tell me that she didn't give a flying hootsie woo if her kid was in school. But without even an elementary level education, they're not going to thrive. Clarence can't read or write. He brings me stacks like all these papers here. Miss, read my mail. He doesn't even know what it says. You know what that means to me? They're going to get ripped off. They're going to be taken advantage of. I hate that. So please continue to support children. What else do we do? Besides get emotional about kids. It's funny, my husband and I don't even have children. We have dogs. But we also have a free pantry. And I will tell you that there are workers on this island that know who I am and have come in and I've had to help them get assistance. Because as you know, there's dry season here. September, October, and November. I have a woman who works in a restaurant here on the island. She has three children. I find her boyfriend to be less than helpful and they've just gotten evicted because again they need to learn how to budget right when you're making that money in november till may you've got to save it because rent is so high so food pantry i have a little food pantry in my front yard and i see people coming i have pictures of it on my flyer i see people coming to my box all the time and i used to think oh my goodness they're taking so much but then they're taking enough for only a meal, right? A bag of spaghetti, a spaghetti sauce, um, a couple vegetables. You know, my husband has a heart for children that I don't have, and my husband goes out and gives them every treat we have in our house. Like, I come out, and I'm like, babe, I thought I bought you chips for your lunch. Oh, the kids were at the box. I took them out. So, so you know, so we have a little pantry in our yard, and it gets hit almost every day, and people aren't taking glamorous food. I put Spam in it, and Vienna hot dogs, and tuna, and spaghetti, and spaghetti sauce, and um, people are taking it every day. And I never thought that cereal would be a luxury item, but cereal is so expensive, it's becoming a luxury item. So I buy at Walmart the cheaper bags, do you know what I'm talking about? The bags, the Malto meal, or whatever and I can Ziploc bag it. And I feel like I'm like making millions of bags. <laughs> so that's a, a great way to help a family without buying and giving them the most expensive box. I also try to buy um, shelf milk mm. um, because I don't know what that milk is called, but it's in a box. Mm. And um, we put that out as well. But the other cool thing that I see about our little pantry that I love, it's my favorite thing because we have cameras all over our house, and so I get to see people when they go to my pantry. But there's two other pantries, 
Resonate Church does a drive-through, and that's at the top of my street. And then there's another pantry nearby. And people will go and get the groceries, and they'll come to my little box and do some exchanging. <laughs> and that just excites me. They can't cook the beans, but my Spanish neighbors sure can, right? So I love that. So we see a lot of exchanging of supplies at our box. And uh, during Christmas, we put out little special Christmas things and hot chocolate when it's cold and blankets and but I definitely, the food pantries, I don't care where there's one, it's needed because people are hungry and groceries are so expensive. And I'm seeing people say, oh, well, they have food stamps. I have people that are getting $20 in food stamps. That doesn't even buy bread and peanut butter and jelly nowadays. So food stamps have actually come down because groceries have gone up so high. So they're just not able to get what they need. And the last thing that I love is when people always say, well, they can go get a job. I want everybody in the world to go and try and get a job at Target, Starbucks, Publix, Wendy's, McDonald's. Because I'll tell you why, I learned a very valuable lesson. We sent Nellie and said, Nellie, the bus is free in Manatee County. Go ride the bus. Go fill out some applications. You can do it, girl. And she came back to us and said, everywhere she went, she needed to do it on the computer. Mm -hmm. They give you a tiny little piece of paper with a web address. She didn't have a computer nor a smartphone. She couldn't fill out applications. They don't have paper applications. So my nurse friend, who is about as loud and as boisterous as I am, her name's Nicole, and sometimes if you've been in the store, you've seen her. She thinks my, she's my parents' seventh child, and she comes in and helps us. She took Nellie to Publix. The Publix on 43rd, and I'm, I'm allowed to say this because it was so bad. The Publix at 43rd where the gym, there's a gym in there, a Dollar Tree, and the Bells outlet. And she took her in there. And Nellie, it took a lot to get her to go, and Nicole was going to help her. And they went in and said to the area customer service, we're here to fill out an application. And the woman said to my wonderful friend, well, you need to figure that out. The computer is over there. And my friend gave just a small piece of Bring on the Ministry's mind and her name tag and shirt about over there we still need help. Because they need employees, but they weren't willing to help. And Nellie was willing to work 40 hours a week. So we have seen it's very hard to get a job because it used to be fill out the piece of paper. And for people who can't read and write, that's very hard. So paper applications are gone and computers are in. So, so we get to do that. During Christmas, you all helped us. Rozier helped us. We did 587 um, Medicaid seniors in facilities that had not had visitors in three months or more. Okay? Wrap your head around that. 587 seniors in Manatee County that I identified with the help of their agencies that had not had visitors in three months. That means no other human contact except the nursing staff, no gifts, no flowers, no cards, for three months, 90 days. So we were able to go in, you guys helped us, lots of people helped us, it was a huge undertaking, and we were able to make gifts for all of them. We wrote personal Christmas cards. Um, myself, my team, a few churches, kids, uh, elementary kids, wrote cards. Um, telling Grandma and Grandpa to have a good day. Merry Christmas. So we did that for Christmas. We'll do it again for Easter. Um, it's a huge, a huge undertaking. And it cost us a little over $5,000. And that was buying most of our things at the Dollar Tree. So very expensive because the Dollar Tree is not the Dollar Tree anymore. Well, it's a dollar and those quarters <laughs> add up is the point, right? Yeah. <laughs> so... Um, so uh, we really appreciate that Rozier really helps and sees the vision. I, my vision is simple. Go where God calls us. 
and we love visiting our seniors. It's a wonderful opportunity. Um, my husband has friended several seniors in our neighborhood um, that he goes and visits weekly. They have no family. And um, he goes and sits with them. He hears about war stories, and he comes home and tells me these things. And so that's a great need in the community as well. So there's a widespread of need, and of course, as I get into nonprofit, people will say all the time they want to direct you, and they go, you should bring it in, you should narrow it, you should only work with the homeless. But if God tells me to speak to a senior, eh, I don't think you're going to stop me, right? <laughs> I'm going to do it. And so we adopted seniors for Christmas, and we also adopted all of the fire departments in and around our homes. Why? Because we need those people. And oftentimes there's so much traffic and car accidents and things, we visited them as well. But we didn't take the traditional cookies and baked goods because I got news for you, my team can't cook worth a lick. <laughs> it is so bad, bless them. We are just not those cooking people. But boy, oh boy, did we take some nice chips and, and uh, candy bars and hot chocolate and some little coffee mugs and some Christian verses. And ooh, we packed those baskets like professionals. But we cannot bake a lick. <coughs> Bless us. We just can't. We go to uh, Ronald McDonald House once a month in St. Pete. And uh, we cook dinner for 90 people. No. Not us. We partnered with the Grays. Have you all know where the Grays is? So the Grays praise the Lord for people like Heather and Jason, who their heart is just wrapped around food, because for Christmas we were able to do a prime rib dinner. And it was wonderful. And you know what is so sad to me? A family told us that they had not had meat in almost three weeks. They're there with their sick children, and everybody thinks that they're doing a good thing, so they bring a dinner. But what's the easiest thing to cook? Pasta. So praise the Lord for the people like Heather and Jason. Um, they actually made prime rib, and then they allowed us to assist under their supervision making the side dishes. I can whip powdered potatoes. Oh. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you. I, thank you so much. It, it was wonderful. But we, we get to do things like that, and we love it. And it's Ronald McDonald House is, um, if you don't know, it's where families and children are able to go. And because you're all Christians, I will tell you this very cool thing about all Ronald McDonald House that most people do not know. I had the opportunity to volunteer with a woman. I was at Ronald McDonald House with my team, and this woman... She said, oh, I'd like to volunteer with you. My husband's a doctor at the hospital. I said, oh, that's wonderful. Please join us. Well, it turns out that I did a little research about her. You know the internet. And it turns out that her husband is one of two doctors in the entire world that performs a surgery on babies while they're in the womb to save their lives that otherwise would have been adopted. Um, aborted. And he has saved up to date over 4,000 babies. So they have to come to Ronald McDonald House in their last 30 days of pregnancy and live there. And then he does the surgery when they go into labor. And he has saved that many babies. Now I want you to know, his wife never said a word about it. She said he was some doctor and she didn't really understand what he did. And she served and mopped floors and walked around and talked to people. And here her husband's a miracle worker. Amen. So when I see pregnant women there, I'm like, life saved, God's good, life saved, God's good. So when we were there for Christmas, there were over 90 people, and a lot of them were pregnant. Very cool. What else? We still hand out water on the streets. Because clean water, I don't care if you're in a third world country or in Bradenton, Florida, it's a problem. Go out and try and find a drinking fountain in Manatee County. They almost don't exist. Even in the parks, they don't exist. 
In fact, the Methodist Church in downtown has a drinking fountain, and there's one on the river walk. That's it. So drinking water is always needed. And we have a volunteer. I actually don't really know her. She drops water off at my house every month. Eight cases every month. And I don't really know her. I don't even know how she knows us. It's frequently there when I'm not there. It, I see her on the camera unloading it all. And um, she drops off eight cases a month. But we hand out about 45 cases a month of water. So it doesn't matter where you are. Water is needed. So to summarize Bring on the Ministry, we do a lot of things. But we do a lot of things with a lot of people. And it really is because of partnerships like Rozier, like West Church, like Turning Points, the Salvation Army. We've been able to build those relationships and have great success because we don't ever think we're the only one. I know I'm not the only one on the streets because I can tell you today that you might be able to reach someone that I'm too brash for. <laughs> My husband is a soft-spoken, sweet man. Sweet man. Loves on every child in the United States. I think when children see me coming, they're like, oh, there she is, the witch. She's not going to give us crackers today. But my husband sure does. So everybody has their place. And so my husband loves on children. I will take every homeless person in America home. My husband, when we got married, actually made me promise that he would never come home to a homeless man living in our home. <laughs> I don't feel like that should be in your wedding vows, but it was. <laughs> so, um, and sometimes that is very hard. And as we turn into 2023, my husband and I bought a duplex, and uh, we've made five payments on it, so if that gives you an idea. And we bought it from my parents, and rather than renting out the other side of our home, we have made it bring on the ministry's headquarters. And so we have left in there a safe room, a bed, and a bathroom. It's set up like a house because it was supposed to be someone's house. And we um, plan on using that for an emergency housing situation should one arise, like the mom who we had to put on a bus when we needed to pay for hoteling for one night. And in our town, that's about $300. And um, so we're going to keep one room set up and a bathroom, and then um, we, praise the Lord, my parents got new washer and dryer, so they gave us the washer and dryer to help us with the towels. We have a volunteer who does all of our, our ministry laundry, but if she gets sick or whatever, my husband and I have to go to the laundromat, and so now we have a washer and dryer, and then we're eliminating our storage unit. Hideaway, because of you know our economy, has gotten more and more expensive. And so we have one room in there that's going to be the ministry's storage. And then we have a place to meet. So during Christmas, we did all of our bag stuffing, et cetera, in the living room. So we are going to raise the money to pay the electric and the water and all of that because we're trying to eliminate things, but also have a safe room. So 2023 is a big year for uh, Bring On the Ministry because we believe that we can do more we want to be able to rent that space, not rent, but allow people to use that space to gather for Bible studies, meetings, and things of that nature, but also for my team to have a place to make phone calls, creatively think, and engage people. So my husband, that was not our plan for my husband and I's duplex. We rented it out for four months, and when it was rented out, as soon as we rented it out, my husband said, I'm so tired of going to storage and driving all around. And I kind of said the same thing. And on the third month, the lady told us she couldn't afford it anymore. And so we felt like that was God really leading the way. And then to sort of really make sure that that was our mission before um, we decided on this, while we were um, fixing it up, my, my dad fixed it up. Before we fixed it up, people would come to the door all the time and want to rent it. Right, because rent is it's so hard to find places here. And people were at our door all the time. Like I would see them on the ring. Hello, can I help you? Yes, I'd like to rent next door. Ironically, the day that my husband and I said, let's do it, not one person has come to our door and asked to rent it. Mm -hmm. So we know that it's meant to be for the ministry. And so my parents have done some work over there and everything in it's brand new. And it's the official agency headquarters. So we're excited. Does anybody have any questions about what we do?
<laughs> no, but where is that place located? Uh, so I live on 18th Street in Bradenton, across from Home Depot. Are you familiar? Like if you go up Cortez mm -hmm. to Home Depot, mm -hmm. it's in the neighborhood across the street at the corner of 18th and 49th. Okay. Ma'am? What is your relationship with Turning Point? So my relationship with Turning Point is um, I am very uh, close with Kathleen, the executive director. She's wonderful. And I had a vision meeting with her and said that I sort of needed a meeting space because I have homeless people come to me and it's very hard for me to meet them on the street all the time. Like sometimes I need a printer or I need internet or I need a chair. And so at that point, navigation is a very um, national becoming program and she had seen it. And she said, well, why don't you help us create a navigation program where you can sit with clients, figure out their lives, and we can kind of write the curriculum together. So that is what we do. And since I've been there for a year in partnership, so when you call me there, I say, this is Melinda with Bring on the Ministry and Turning Points. Um, I'm actually training two of their staff right now to do what I do. So they will have two full-time staff. So that's our relationship with them, is I have an office there where I can tell homeless people on the street to meet me there. They all know turning points, and um, I'm training their staff and writing curriculum. Mm -hmm. and then, but your funding is different. Your separate their funding, funding is completely different. I get not a dime from turning points, and they get not a dime from Bring on the Ministry. Okay, thank you. Yes, ma'am. Yes. So besides um, monetarily, how can the Guild help you? Continue to collect small individual toiletries. They are becoming so much harder to find because people are going to green, so they're putting pumps in. And Manatee County's Health Department will not let us put pumps in our unit. So we are always going to need hotel supplies. And um, we, if we don't have them, we have to buy them on Amazon, and they are very expensive. Very expensive. Like a case of shampoo is almost a dollar a tube. Mm. Um, so, like if you shower at turning points, they're allowed to put your supplies in ketchup like cups. Do you know what I mean? Like the little condiment cups. Mm -hmm. And we're not allowed to do that by health code. So, we will always need your hotel supplies. We will always need feminine hygiene. Always. And we will always be collecting inspirational books and things like that for our nursing homes. Um, like tracks, quick devotions, um, inspirational cards, things like that, word searches. So if you get those things as gifts, or you know when you sign up to, like you made a donation to a place and they send you like tablets of paper mm -hmm. and Christmas cards and you're like, what do I do with that? <laughs> this girl right here loves it. Ma'am, can you use the outdated uh, things um, like uh, the upper room and so mm -hmm. forth? Yes. Even though they're yes. all or yes. whatever. I give reading materials to everybody to either keep them company in a nursing home or keep them out of prison. It doesn't matter the date on it. Great. Not at all. Yes. Um, so collecting those things. Um, pray. Pray for us to make sure that we can raise money to continue to do what we do, because the economy is killing us. Ubers are getting more expensive, groceries, pantry supplies, you all know your pantry might some days is full and some days is empty, right? So definitely pray on that. Um, but also, at any time, like leading into Easter, if you want to write Easter cards to nursing home seniors, they love it. They probably love it more than the things that we give them. If you go to the hospital and you get skid socks and you don't know what to do with them, this girl right here. So I have a nursing home at 301 in Sarasota. It's at 301 and the McDonald's. So if you're driving up 301 and there's the McDonald's as you head into Sarasota, I always say you're kind of in hood and hood. Mm -hmm. um, my friend is the rec director of a nursing home there, and he said, if you can do one thing for me for Christmas. I said, I can probably do more than that. What do you have in mind? He said, we cannot get skid socks. 
and I ordered him ten cases of a hundred pairs because he couldn't get them on their budget. And he said, people are falling and we can't let them out of their wheelchairs. And so we ordered them. Were they pretty? No. They look like they're straight up from the hospital. But he was so happy when we unloaded those, you would have thought I gave them Disney dollars. So things like that we just don't think about. Um, but always just those little things, I always think about people who are alone. Are there any other questions? And just so you know, much like you discuss your budget, we write a $65,000 budget. And this year, as of date, we have about 18000 in the bank. So we spend an absorbent amount of money. Um, the shower trailer, the insurance and things on the trailer are about 4000 a year. It's quite expensive, plus gas and propane. So things that people don't think about. In fact, my husband called me the other day. He took the shower trailer out to do showers and got a flat tire. Mm -hmm. And trailer tires, $240. Mm -hmm. That's more than a car tire. So any other questions? Well, we appreciate you all so much. We always love the relationship we have with Rozier. I love Peggy, I know, has come in the store and just sat and chatted with me and asked for updates. But I'm always at Holy Cow when I'm not on the street. So come have ice cream with me. Thank you. You're very welcome.